Hi everyone, Paul here with Newegg TV. Today's video is going to be an installation guide for Intel LGA processors. Before we go into the demo, you should take a moment to make sure that you're properly grounded. There's a couple ways to do that. One is to use an anti-static anti wristband like this one. That's a great way to do it. Uh, if you don't have one of those available, you can also use a power supply that is plugged into a properly grounded AC outlet. Also, if the power supply is installed in a computer case, you can simply touch the computer case or any large metal object that should discharge you and then refrain from rubbing your feet over shag carpeting while you're handling your computer parts. Now this is an LGA socket from Intel. This is the actual socket where your CPU is installed and they are fairly delicate. That is because the pins for the CPU actually reside in the socket rather than on the CPU itself. So I'm going to go over a quick demonstration of how to install a couple different socket types. We have an 1155 socket processor right here and then we're also going to do an LGA 2011. I've gone ahead and set the motherboard on the retail box and that's just to provide a little bit of extra cushioning beneath it. You want to set it on a non-conductive surface. Now here's the socket right here. There's a simple arm that we have to raise. There is a protective cover on there and you want to make sure you save that cover just in case you ever need to return the motherboard. You should also keep your retail box and all the accessories as packaging because that will help keep the motherboard safe if you ever need to ship it. Bear in mind there's a couple different types of socket covers. This is an external cover which I can't fit on right now but this one just snaps over the top so you can pop that one off fairly easily if it comes with those. Uh, if you're using a socket cover like this one you simply need to lift the retaining arm right there that will release this bracket. It will come loose like so and you can lift it back like that. This socket cover you simply grab by the two little nubs on either side and lift off like so and that will expose the socket. Bear in mind the pins in here are extremely delicate so you don't want to touch anything in there and I always recommend if you are going to open up the socket get the CPU installed as quickly as possible so you don't have any risk of dropping anything on top of that. Bear in mind the CPU is going to have a couple notches on either side and this is an 1155 socket once again. Uh, this, should bear, this should account for 1155 as well as 1156 sockets are all going to be very similar to this. So simply uh, bear in mind where those two little notches are, they will line up with a couple of notches there. You can also reference the uh, triangle that's on the corner of the socket, it's actually right there, a little triangle, and that will also line up with the triangle on the corner of the CPU. You want to drop the CPU straight down, and if you hold it by the front and the back, there's actually a couple of spaces on the socket that will help you have a little bit more space, and that's all you want to do, drop it straight down, you don't need to push down, that will be handled by the bracket itself. Lower the bracket, it will uh, get, be guided into the notch down here at one end. At this point you will need to apply a bit of pressure to get this arm to drop all the way down, latch it in place, and then you're all set. Next up is going to be installing the heatsink fan, and if you're purchasing a retail box processor, you will often get a heatsink fan that looks very similar to this. It has push pin installation, it's fairly simple to use, and you'll notice right here that gray material is thermal paste, and that is necessary, you always have to have thermal paste. So here we're doing sort of a new installation of a CPU, uh, and then when we do 2011 in just a second, I'll show you uh, some basic steps for doing a, uh, an old installation if you have a used CPU. Um, you want to take a look at where this little plug is for the fan. I have my CPU fan right over there, so I'll line that up. Drop this down straight on top, it will line up with the push pins, like so. Again, don't need to put much pressure on it right now. And uh, I'm doing this outside of the box so I can get a little bit better grip on this, but I want to do opposite corners, push these straight down, they will snap into place. And now my heatsink fan's installed and I can simply, well, I would have to loosen that up, but that's why you want to make sure you get this plug with enough distance to plug it in, but for the purposes of our demonstration, this is installed here, and then when we actually start up the uh, system, it will spread that thermal paste out and make sure that you have good conductivity between the CPU and the heatsink fan. Here is a socket 2011 processor, and again, just like the 1155 or 1156, no pins on the bottom, just gold contact pads, and you should always make sure that you don't actually touch those contact pads because you don't want the oil from your skin to get on it. Now this one has actually already been used, so you might notice that there is some thermal paste on here. You do want to clean off old thermal paste before you do a new CPU installation. That's always best practice. You can use some rubbing alcohol and uh, a microfiber cloth. I actually like to use uh, coffee filters. That's simply because uh, they're disposable and they don't tend to get little pieces of uh, paper towel if you're going to use something like that everywhere. 
the CPU cleaned off again, we're going to go through roughly the same uh, paces that we went through with the 1155 socket. Here again we have a snap-on uh, socket cover and uh, generally it's recommended to lift the socket cover up before removing that. There's two retention arms with socket 2011, so you want to lift this one up first, then you have this one over here with the sort of V-shape to it, you lift that one up next, and uh, by lifting this one and then pushing down on the U-shaped one, you can lift the actual socket up like so. Now bear in mind at this point this arm will be sort of hanging out here and you can actually snap that one back down if you want to give yourself a little bit more room to work with there. But at this point we can pop this cover off and that should stay up by itself with the configuration I have it in. Again, uh, same as with the 1155, we have a gold arrow in the corner on the socket which is actually in the cover right here. There is a little arrow printed on the corner of that socket and we're simply going to line that up. Again, we also have notches here. They're slightly off center, but there's four with socket 2011, so you can also reference those. We're going to drop this straight down into the socket once again without putting any pressure on it and without touching any of the pins. There we have it. Then we can lift this arm up, drop down the socket, close down the V-shaped arm, snap it into place, and then close down the U-shaped arm like that. And now our CPU is installed. Now one last thing here before we go into the heatsink fan installation, which I have right here, is uh, since I'm sort of doing this as a new, uh, or as a replacement CPU installation, since I cleaned off the old thermal paste, you do want to make sure that you apply some new thermal paste before you put the heatsink fan on. And the simplest way to do this is simply to make a, about, for 2011 I'd say a P-shaped blob in the middle. And this thermal paste is coming out very slowly, so bear in Bear with me here. So we're going to put about that much. That's all you need. You really do not want to overdo it on the thermal paste because you do not want it to leak out the edges. And from here, we can simply lower down our heat sink fan. Again, no thermal paste on that heat sink fan, so uh, double check that. Uh, Intel's LGA 2011 socket does have a universal back plate right here. Bear in mind if you're going to use an aftermarket heat sink fan, you will want to follow the instructions on that heat sink fan's installation guide. Now just like 2000, uh, I'm sorry, just like 1155 here, we're going to start threading the uh, retention screws right here. We're going to go with opposite corners. So I'm just going to give a couple turns to get each side started on the threading. I'm going to go in an X pattern to tighten down opposite corners and what that is going to do is make sure that I'm not putting any pressure disproportionately on one corner of the CPU than the other. Once they're all threaded, I'm just going to go ahead and continue that X pattern and just give a few twists on each side to slowly tighten down the heatsink fan. And that's going to wrap it up for this tutorial video on installing Intel LGA socket processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you'd like to see more tutorial videos, you can check out our Newegg YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.